to support me, aren't you? Support you, yes. Life for you, no. Come on, mate. Thanks. Well, it is your fault. Yeah, thanks. Mac, you got yourself into this situation. You've got to get yourself out of it. Even if that does mean telling a colleague, a personal friend, that they're not going to get the partnership they thought was theirs on a place. It's a very awkward situation. Oh, made worse by you. We know that Steve and Caroline would make excellent partners. They're probably both ready to take over the responsibility right but now. But you can only give one of them the partnership. You went and gave them both the distinct impression they were going to be made partners. When did I? Around about the time you told them they were going to be made partners. I'm a doctor, Kate, not an administrator. Oh, then you should be used to giving people bad news, shouldn't you? Oh, where's Jo? It's her turn to bring in the milk. Give her a chance. She's only a few minutes late. <sighs> if we had to pull the minutes we've given to her over the years we'd have a what a lot of minutes anyway I'm not bothered about the milk she promised to lay out my morning calls and she knew I had an early start you've got morning calls yeah why do you sound so surprised no no reason no but I think Matt wants to wear this morning <laughs> yeah he probably wants me to cover for him or something well Mac can, Mac can what nothing Mac Caroline uh, come here we're in my room sorry I've got a visit list as long as my arm later Yes, but, um... That went well. Uh, what went well? Hi, Steve. Don't see where I'm milk. <clears throat> Helen, why don't we go and get some milk from the corner shop? Listen, I'll go. No, no, no. You stay where you are. Uh, yeah. Do the exercise. We've got five minutes. Uh, yes, right. Is, uh, is something wrong? No, 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 no. Um, as a matter of fact, I wanted to have a word. Um, Steve, sit down. Right. That's wonderful. See you soon, then. Oh, there's Bernard. Just come in for his breakfast. That was Ivy. She was talking about the reunion. Do you know butter? Oh, I'm sorry. She's absolutely thrilled. Now, you'd better leave your suit out. Or go to the doctor's and I'll give it a good press. We don't want to see you all creased up, do we? No, no. Well, that would never do, would it? Bernard. Are we still on for tonight? Only, well, I haven't seen Ivy and the girls for so long, not to mention the boys. Uh, do you have to keep going on and on and on about it? Sorry, but please, 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 do try and be positive about things. Uh, it doesn't look like I have much choice, does it? So, after talking to the health authorities and getting the all clear from the accountants, I am delighted to be able to offer you a partnership at the Riverside Practice. What, are you going to say anything? Oh, well, yeah, I mean, great. You seem a bit surprised. I'm well, not surprised. I, I mean, I know we were talking about it. I, I just didn't expect it today. Well, welcome aboard. Thanks. for your appointment. Oh, no. Bernard, Bernard. Oh, my dear. You look as if you've seen a ghost. I am going to swing for that man one day. I'm sure he was only doing what seemed right. How? By building up Caroline's hopes, only to have them knocked down again. She'll be so upset when she finds out. Who's next? Uh, Hi, partner. Welcome to the grown-up world of general practice partnership. Welcome to meetings, paperwork, more paperwork and more meetings. Thanks. You've got Mrs Wickham next, sir. <laughs> Mrs Wickham. Still some shrapnel in there, then? Yes, the medic said it was too dangerous to try to remove it, too close to the artery. Oh, Fifty years ago. They probably could remove it now if it was necessary. Did give me any trouble? Not particularly. Only when I'm walking a lot. As I say, I'm only here because my wife insisted. <laughs> Get your trousers off. So, anything else? No, I'm fine. Good. We don't get a lot of war wounds these days. No. RAF, wasn't it? One of the Blue Green Boys. Bomber Command. Ah, oh, right. Well, look, I could refer you to a consultant, but I honestly don't think it's that serious. You'll live. That's what I thought. And the next one, please. Um, Mr Hardyman. Oh, and I'm really chuffy, Steve. Thanks. 
Mr. Hardiman. Morning, all. Morning. It's good news about Steve, isn't it? What, got another job, has he? No, he's been made a partner. Haven't you heard? No, I hadn't, actually. Where's Mac? He's in his office. Uh, Caroline. Uh, but he's, he's got a patient. Thanks, Amelia. Is there anything else you want to talk about? You just look a bit down, that's all. Mac, I think you've got something to say to me. Uh, Dr. Powers, I'm with a patient. All right, I, I've got to be going. No, hang on, but... Actually, I've been trying to chase you up all morning. I've already but... heard from Joe. Of all people. I just thought you might have had the decency to tell me yourself. Well, obviously, I thought wrong. Caroline! <laughs> Dr. Powers? Do. Let her calm down. No point trying to talk to her now. I did try. Well, if anybody needs me, I'll be. Um... I know, in your office. You okay with the mess? Keep your eyes clear for that fighter. Don't forget. We're hit. I got it in the leg. I've got to try and lose Bernard. it. Bernard? <laughs> It's not my fault, Johnny. It's not my fault. No, 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 it's all right, son. It's all right. Come on, let's get you out of there, eh? Come on, easy, easy. It's all right. <sighs> yes, uh, next patient, please, Joe. Mrs. Woodward, uh, Dr. Powers is ready for you now. has been going on. What do you mean? Well, the irritability, the panic attacks. I bet you're having mood swings as well. You must be driving Paddy up the wall. What goes on between Paddy and me is none of your business. No, no, it's nothing to be ashamed of. I'm not ashamed of anything, and I don't have to sit here and be insulted by you. Bernard, I'm talking about what we call post-traumatic stress disorder, and it seems to me that you have all the classic symptoms. Post-traumatic stress. We had a different word for that in my day. I know it isn't easy, but I really am trying to help. There's nothing wrong with me. I don't know why you're going on and on about it. I am not sick. Nobody's saying there's anything wrong with you. I'm just saying that I think you're not very well. Look, I think that something pretty awful happened to you a long time ago, and you still haven't come to terms with it. I also think that it's the cause for the depression, the anxiety attacks, the flashbacks. Hmm? Come on. I can't get them out of my head. I know. What was Matt playing at, promising you a partnership and Caroline? Don't ask me. I'm just a normal, sensible human being with a brain. He was trying to please you both, I'm sure, but he's ended up making enemies all round. Yeah, well, I hope he's paying for it. He will do. The way I feel, I'd quite happily let Caroline have the permit. You don't mean that. Do you? No. Look, this is Mac's problem. He's got to sort it out. Easier said than done. Have you spoken to Caroline yet? I'd, I'd rather give myself colonic irrigation than speak to Caroline at the moment. I mean, she's it. Well, you might have to. You're a partner now. That means new responsibility. Can't just hope the problem's going to go away. Yeah, well, thanks. That makes me feel a lot better. Uh, I'm putting the kettle on. Anyone fancy coffee? Um, yeah, uh, I'd love one. Steve? No arsenic. Well, it's official. You are now looking at a fully-fledged member of the Royal College of General Practitioners. And I'd like to invite you all for a celebration dinner tonight. Well, thanks, Rana. And don't tell me. They'll be making you a partner next. Do you think that's a no, then? I volunteered when I was 18, October 1944. The war was nearly over. I was a sergeant pilot posted to Bomber Command with a crew of my own, uh, flying Lancasters. Well, I laugh, really. I had seven men under my command, and all of them were older than me. A laugh? Don't get me wrong, it was dangerous and bloody terrifying. But it wasn't half exciting and glamorous. Chaps like me were in great demand. One glimpse of those wings on your tunic, and the women would throw themselves at you. 
Yes, strange times. That how you met Paddy? Yes. Not that she threw herself at me. She was always a bit too formal for that sort of thing. It was what they called a lightning romance. People didn't hang around in those days. If you met Miss Wright, well, time was a precious commodity in the war. A chap didn't know if each night was going to be his last. How many missions did you fly? Operations, ops. The Yanks flew missions. Sorry. Um, I flew 17. Kiel, Essen, Berlin, Dresden. Dresden? That's the raid where... Uh, thousands of British and American bombers set fire to an undefended city. Well, Dresden was a long flight and it wasn't going to be present. And Johnny, you know, my pal, and he'd been my navigator from the start. He was acting peculiarly all that day, very quiet. And later in the crew room, he told me he wasn't well. He, he just had a, a bad feeling. Well, chaps got those bad feelings all the time, especially before a, a big op. And, and so... So? So I refused his request. I, I told him he had to fly as my navigator that night. I'll never forget the, the look in his eyes. But what else could I do? I was the captain. You were a boy of 18. I was the captain. We took off late that evening. Finding the target was easy. We could see the fire miles away. We dropped our incendiaries into the fire and Johnny set a course for home. I was looking forward to seeing Paddy the next morning. I sent her a, a Valentine card. And, well, things had cooled off a bit. And I just wanted to know if she'd sent one to me. The boys were beginning to relax. They always did on the way home. I kept telling them to keep their eyes peeled for night fighters. But it was still a surprise when that Jerry jumped us. The cockpit took a direct hit with chunks of red hot metal flying all over the shop. That's when I got the shrapnel in my leg. I, I managed to lose him and I called on the RT to pose to see if they were okay. And that's when I noticed that Johnny copped it. Uh, he'd been killed instantly. Is it safe? I just wanted to apologise. I didn't know. Oh, it's not your fault. And I'm sorry for getting in a strop. Kate explained. What a bummer. Yeah, well, that's one way of putting it. Here's my letter of resignation to oh, the other. Oh, you don't mean that. I do. Look, I bet before all this happened, you were happy here. I know this isn't the be-all and end-all of your ambitions, me neither, but, you know, you do a good job and people respect you. And those patients out there, they don't know if you're a partner or not and they don't care. See them, you're just Dr Powers trying to make them feel a bit better. Rana. <laughs> and that's what it's about, isn't it? You've been watching too much American TV. Too cheesy? Yeah. <laughs> But it's just what I needed, thank you. You on for tonight? No, it's not every day I get my MRCGP, is it? Please. Look, can I think about it? Of course. Come in. Caroline. Oh, um, sorry, I didn't realise it. No, it's fine, I was just on my way out. Look, I'll see you later. Well, you'd better come in. I'm looking forward to seeing you grovel. Sorry, I didn't realise. What do you mean? Well, I was, uh, well, I misunderstood. I thought the trauma was to do with the Dresden raids, you know, killing all those people. Ah, oh, that was war. Things happened in war. <laughs> Dresden wasn't my fault, but I never stopped feeling responsible for what happened to Johnny. He'd have been 75 this year. He knew there was a cannon shell out there somewhere with his number on it. 
I made sure they found each other. You know that's not true. I can't let myself believe otherwise. Uh, look, Doc, I, I'd better go. Uh, Paddy and I are going to a squadron reunion tonight in Yorkshire. At the base? Yes. I'm not sure I think that's a very good idea. Well, we can't not go. The hotel's booked and everything. Besides, Paddy's keen to see her friends, you know, talk about old times. Yeah, well, that's precisely why I don't think you should go. Look, there's clearly a lot of unresolved guilt about Johnny's death. This reunion thing will just rake up a lot of memories, won't it? Memories that you can't cope with, so that's why the anxiety, stress, panic attacks. I've been dealing with this for 55 years now. No, Bernard, you have not been dealing with it. You've been repressing it. Oh, don't give me all that do-gooder nonsense. That business in the car, that is what I'm talking about. All right. I do get sometimes a, a bit fed up, but I'm fine most of the time. Everybody says so. I'm the life and soul of the party. No, it's not just the panic attacks, it's the irritability. That's just me. And the violent mood swings from supremely happy to seriously depressed. Paddy just ignores me when I'm feeling grumpy. Does she? Look, what about the arguments and the stress, hmm? Do you think that's good for either of you? Now, listen. For both your sakes, I am going to prescribe a course of antidepressants, and I'm going to refer you to a stress counsellor. Oh, what? To, to help you deal with it, Bernard. Look, I don't need to see a shrink. I'm not a loony. Look, I know. I know you're not a loony, and I know that they aren't shrinks. These people are specifically trained to help deal with problems like this. No, 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 that's it. I'm not going to sit here and take that rubbish from you. Bernard, I am trying to help. Doctors. What do you know about anything? Believe me, I wish there was something I could do to change No it. problem. I mean, I didn't want the situation. I, uh... What? I'm a big girl. I'll get over it. Really? Look, there's no hard feelings, honest. OK, I must admit I was a bit angry, but that wasn't your fault. Well, that's true enough. So, um, how are you going to sort things out with Mac? Well, I think it's up to him to sort things out, don't you? Right. Haven't you got patience to see, boss? <sighs> Don't start all that. I'm only joking. Good. Steve. Yeah? Congratulations. <sighs> Thanks. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Jobs. Face it, some people are arrogant and stubborn and they never change their ways. Come on, he's an old man. I'm not talking about Bernard, I'm talking about you. <laughs> yeah, I blew it, didn't I? No, you tried. Maybe a little too hard, but you tried. Hi, Kate. Hi, Caroline. Mac. Oh, talking of stubborn, when are you going to talk to Caroline? Only I'd like to be alive when you get round to it. You know I haven't had a minute since I got in. Stop playing games, Mac. Speaking as your practice manager, I'm telling you, people are getting pretty damn fed up with your attitude. My attitude? Yeah, OK, OK. Leave it to me. And speaking as your wife, I'm telling you that if you don't bury the hatchet with Caroline by tea time, I'm going to... OK. Right. Dr Maguire. Oh, hello, Bernie. Can we talk? Yeah, of course. Come through. Are you come tonight, huh? Oh, I'd love to, but there's a partners' meeting. Probably go on all night, and Phil's looking after Dan. Cool. But have one for me, won't you? Sure. You off tonight, mate? Yeah, I want to miss it for the world. Caroline? Yeah, you can count on me. We've been ages with the doctors. I've been worried sick. We ought to be at the railway station in less than an hour. I'm not going to the reunion. Bernard! I know you'll be disappointed, but Dr Maguire thought it would be for the best. He's booked me in to see a counsellor. Tuesday week. Caroline, hi. Hi. Had a good day? What do you think? Look, I'm really sorry about the um, misunderstanding about this partnership thing. It was entirely my fault, and I apologise unreservedly for any upset I might have caused. Have caused. Have caused, right. And I promise you that we'll look into the question of another partnership as soon as the opportunity arises. And I don't want you to think that this means that you're not valued very highly here at Riverside. Everyone thinks very well of you. And, uh, 
really want to keep you on the team. <laughs> well, you're only saying that because it's true. <laughs> so you'll stay? Well, why shouldn't I stay? Yeah, good. Good. Ready? Absolutely, you fully-fledged GP-ness. Come on, then. Have fun, you guys, eh? Have fun. I wanted to see you, Dr. Maguire. Here I am. What can I do for you? I wanted to know why you are trying to ruin my marriage. Where's Bernard? He's at home. He is not coming to the reunion tonight. He says you think he needs a psychiatrist. No, no. What I said was... It's out of the question. Oh? I don't think you know what it did do to him. And I don't think you know what he's been through. Oh, don't I? Paddy, the counsellors I have in mind are good. They really are very good. They deal with servicemen who are suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. That's people with experiences in Northern Ireland, the Gulf, the Falklands, etc. Post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm. So that's what it's called now. Fifty years ago, it was called LMF. Lack of moral fibre. And any pilot being guilty of that was sent out to clean out the latrines. Do you think Bernard is a coward? No, I don't. It isn't about cowardice. It's about the fact that his best friend was killed. He's told you about Johnny. But where are you going? Honestly. Oh, no, you're not. Hey? Monthly partners meeting. Might as well start as you mean to go on. Oh, well, it's just I've told Oh, what... unless you prefer to go out and have a good time. Oh, OK. They're not as bad as everyone makes out. Kate drones on about the cost of paper clips and boring stuff, but Max usually asleep by 10.30. 10.30? I don't know what Bernard has told you, but I wasn't in love with him. I was in love with Johnny. His best friend? Yes. Bernard and I were good friends, very good friends. I think Bernard needed me, or someone like me. And of course, I was proud of him. It was very pleasant to be seen on the arm of a young flyer. But it wasn't the real thing. I knew that when I met Johnny. But you were still seeing Bernard? It was bad luck to split up crews. Bernard had found out about me and Johnny, he would have had to have replaced him. So we just carried on and hoped that Bernard would remain in the dark. So, Paddy, the night that Johnny died, what happened? They raided Dresden the night before St Valentine's Day. Earlier that morning, Johnny had asked me to marry him, and I'd accepted. We were both very happy. Johnny wasn't nervous about the raid. Well, as I said, it's bad luck to split up crews. So I said that I wanted him to fly. And then there was that, that terrible tragedy with the night fighter. Next morning, I got Bernard's Valentine's card. Well, I didn't tell him about Johnny. I never did. We just carried on as usual. And we married straight after the war. Oh, Paddy, all I care about is my patient. And I really do believe that the best thing you can do for Bernard is to talk to him. Tell him the truth about you and Johnny. What? Look, he believes that he's responsible for his death. He needs to get rid of the guilt. And tell him that I never really loved him all along. I honestly believe that if you were to tell Bernard what really happened... It would kill him. He's riddled with guilt enough as it is. And you think that I'm not? I don't want to hurt you, Bernard. But I have to tell you the truth. I hope this doesn't change your feelings towards me. It doesn't. Really? No. Because I knew about Johnny. I knew from the start. He told me the day he died. He wrote me a letter the day of the raid after I'd refused his request not to fly. I suppose I knew that all along you'd never really loved me. And when Johnny came along, you found the real thing. I suppose that's why I ordered him to fly. Bernard, I didn't know that... I know. Nobody knew. I didn't want you to know. I felt ashamed. Johnny's death wasn't your fault. I tried not to blame myself, too. 
But there was a war on. No, no, no. If I hadn't ordered Johnny to fly, he wouldn't have died that night. So he might have been killed in the next raid. Who knows? But... But what, Bernard? But I've lived the last 55 years the, the knowledge that I killed the only man you really loved. Can't ask you to forgive me for that. You poor darling. The accountants have asked me again to remind everyone that VAT receipts must be filed and presented in order. It's not much to ask. At every hour that they spend sorting out the receipts costs us money. So please, in order to save time and money, can you just sort out your own receipts before you give them to me, okay? 